Good morning and welcome to King's Dominion. Really excited to be in this part today. We've got 12 different roller coasters to ride, including Intimidator 305. Really excited for that huge bucket list roller coaster. Along with that as well, we've got an RMC and uh, various other different rides to experience throughout the day. The park dates back to 1975, it used to be owned by Paramount, hence why it's got a very similar entrance to Kings Island. However, there's a lot more trees down the entrance here to this park. Uh, but yeah, it's very, very nice. Uh, I mean, it's a very similar setup, just a little bit smaller. It's a little bit more closed in. Uh, but so far, first impressions, I really like it. I mean, this whole entrance street uh, with the Eiffel Tower down at the bottom uh, and all the fountains, I love it. And also here, uh, we've got the Grand Carnival uh, that we didn't manage to see at Kings Island uh, because it was off due to the weather. Uh, and as you probably saw at the end of that vlog, we wasn't very impressed with how they shut the park early. Fingers crossed the weather is going to be better today and it means we're not going to get called off as uh, we definitely want to check out all the stuff from the Grand Carnival. Uh, loads of decorations all up from that. Uh, you got like all the tinsel and banners up. It looks very, very nice, very pretty. And I'll spin you guys round. So you can see all of these details just here. Very nice events and it's only running for a very short time period as well. So it makes it a bit more exciting, a bit more exclusive. Well, there you go, look at all the uh, fountains down there. It looks very, very nice. I mean, they upgraded the fountain package at Kings Island. Uh, however, I must say, I think these ones are probably more grand, a bit more uh, impressive. I think the ones that at Kings used to look a bit like this. Uh, but yeah, it's got all the same sort of buildings and stuff down the side, uh, like International Street. However, um, it's got all these trees, so it makes it a bit more enclosed, a bit more shade. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it all. Of course, you've got me, Alex and Brett. We're also going to be joined by Taylor again today from Coaster Studios. Park hours, 10.30 until 10 p.m. So we've got a long day today. But yeah, here we go, here's Alex. Getting in the mood for the Grand Carnival. I don't, I don't think I lost you, a lot of weight in the last 24 hours. I don't I think your head can fit in there, unfortunately. No, the head's still massive. I'll tell you what though, they put some effort in with this event, don't they? We're hoping to catch the actual Carnival today, aren't we? Oh, That's well, the, if the weather stays all right, we might actually get something. I'm hoping so. To miss it. Uh, oh, yeah, looking it. forward to it today. Look at this crease shirt here. Isn't it like Brett? Yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before? Yeah, it was yesterday, yeah, with the free show. Have you ever heard of an iron? Come on. Have you? Yeah. You ever used one? It's fresh. Oh, no, I never used one. He's saying, have you seen an iron? I'm like, have you ever heard of one, Sean? Yeah. I don't know what one is. time travel to get here today. I'll tell you what, we even had an iron in the room last night. You could have used it. Oh, I thought it was a telephone. Oh, no, that's definitely an iron. But here we go, welcome to King's Dominion. Nice fountains on the go. Just waiting for the park to open now. Uh, oh, there we go, the Eiffel Tower's open. We've got to go up there today and get some views. Oh my God. And here it is, massive bucket list coaster, Intimidator 305. And here we go. I am so, so excited to actually ride this thing. And I'm actually a little bit nervous uh, just because of the intensity that we're going to experience on this ride. It opened here in 2010. I remember watching the build of this. And I remember some friends of mine actually came to the opening day. I wasn't lucky enough to come back then. Uh, they came for the opening day and they said it was ridiculously intense, an amazing ride. Look at this. Of course, 305 foot tall. Going to take us up the cable lift hill quite fast, straight down. It's what's going to be one of the most intense elements ever on a coaster um, around here. Oh wow, really can't wait, look at this. I'm a bit nervous, you know, look at airtime, 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 high speed turns. And here we go, this thing looks absolutely beautiful. Taylor's arrived, he's somewhere around here. Oh, lockers down here, are we? Lockers? Yeah, look at that. Oh my God, the station and stuff's not very good for it, is it? However, it looks so intimidating. This is the one. We're going to get the lockers sorted and we'll uh, go on. Unfortunately, we're back to no on-ride filming again today, sadly. But we'll let you know our thoughts on Intimidator 305 when we come off. I mean, look at that. Absolutely incredible.
then, so we've just had two rides on Intimidator 305. We had a front row first and then a back row. I don't really quite know exactly how to start this, so I'm just gonna let Alex kick off and then I'll sort of jump in. If I'm starting a review, then that should be concerning for when you hear Sean. Let me just say, this coach is called Intimidator 305, right? It should be called Inferior 305 for me, in my opinion. I've had a lot of hype for this ride, people talking about it, how great it is. Coming off that first drop, you're gonna grey out, you might even black out, um, especially on the back row. I mean, don't get me wrong, the view you get from that coaster is sensational, and there are some really good bank turns. There's some great speed to that coaster as well. However, that coaster just felt a little bit tame for me, to be honest. There's a lot of people who've been raving saying it's a forceful coaster. It's one of the most intense roller coasters that you'll ever do. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't even put it in my top 20 of most intense coasters I've ever done. No. It just it felt like it was really lacking something. There's a lot of bank to the left, bank to the right, repeating itself. And not really much in terms of, I was expecting a couple of airtime hills, and the one airtime hill there was had a trim break and it did slow the ride down quite It's probably one of the worst trims I've ever had on a ride that so. was. It actually felt like the train was about to completely stop. I mean, looking at it off ride, it looks like it's got some speed and you feel it when you're on there. The speed is something I can't take away from. It's great. But the coaster just felt like it was just doing lots of circles and helixes, but there weren't really much kind of, wow, that was amazing, or, oh, like, take your breath away for a split second moment. It just got a little bit tame, and, like, I get that it's early in the morning, things have to have time to warm up, but I actually don't think warming up is going to solve the issue I have with this ride. Did he get some grey out? Like, a little bit coming yeah. down off the drop into that first turn, but only very slightly. I think that's only because of the speed that you pull down into it. I actually think that it's lacking a lot of intensity. It was actually quite rickety at, at times, and so the way it kind of ejects you into the side, into some of those bank turns, I was expecting it to be really fun and, you know, wow, I'm being thrown to my right, wow, to my left. And I wasn't, I actually found myself grabbing my neck because it wasn't too comfortable. I'm actually coming off quite disappointed, to be honest. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, this ride has proved something big to me. And that is, of course, we film these videos and share our reviews, but please, please, please make sure that you don't get too hyped up for a ride. Uh, because I've got to say, it's probably the most hyped up ride of the trip for me and it's probably the most disappointing in terms of what I was expecting. Um, you know, obviously we film these reviews, we share our thoughts, but please, please, please don't listen too much to it and wait until you ride something yourself and make your own opinion on something. Because that for me, I'd say is my biggest disappointment of the trip. I really wanted to come off that and say that was absolutely crazy. I love intense rides, but it just didn't cut it for me. Um, of course, I did nearly grey out. Uh, well, I, I did grey out. I didn't black out, of course. I did grey out. Uh, but it wasn't... I have had more blurred vision on other rides before. For me, it came a little bit later than what I was expecting. Um, it wasn't actually the first drop. Not the first part of the turn. It was a little bit further round on that turn before coming up um, into the airtime hill over there. They did get reprofiled. So people were finding it too intense. Uh, but yeah. For me, that, the, the massive trim break on there was awful. It's one of the worst trims ever. The ride, to be honest, reminded me quite a bit of Formula Rossa in terms of how all this section works with the turns to the left and turns to the right. It just reminded me of Formula Rossa. Good start, and then afterwards it just really uh, peters out. I'm just, I'm just quite disappointed, to be honest. I'm like, yeah, it just goes to show, doesn't it? Don't like listen to people all the time with things. You've got to make your own judgment on these rides, as you might come away a bit disappointed. Uh, for me personally, I mean, I'm not even a big fan of Millennium Force at Cedar Point. I, I would take Millennium Force over that because of the views of Lake Erie uh, and some of the other parts of Millennium Force. I, I, I feel the speed a lot more. Um, but yeah, don't get me wrong, it's a good ride. I'm glad we've had a couple of goes on it. It's definitely a back row coaster. We had, say, that's probably my biggest hype of the trip and it's just not quite lived up to it for me. I know we've seen a lot of coaster hardware over the past two weeks. That's probably not helped as well. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff, but I do like Millennium Force more, um, Fury 325, um, yeah, it's one of those. But I'm glad we've done it, I enjoyed it, uh, but onwards and upwards, we've still got some more great rides to do in this park. Right then, so we decided to do Flight of Fear. Nothing to really film with that one because it's an indoor coaster, owned here in 1996. Oh, we've done a couple of those on the trip actually already. We did Poltergeist, it's an outdoor one. 
uh, and then we also did uh, one as well over at Kings Island. So done a few of those, and uh, yeah, you know, I enjoyed it. I wouldn't say the theming is as good in there as the one at Kings Island, uh, but the coaster itself uh, was really good. I enjoy Premier Rides, to be honest. I think they're really nice and snappy, and they fit a lot into quite a small space there. Of course, it's a completely different manufacturer, but it kind of reminds me in terms of if you've never done one of those, rock and roller coaster on steroids. That's what we're kind of looking at um, with all the different inversions and how close you are to other parts of the track. Uh, I enjoyed it, really nice indoor coaster. You know me, I like my coasters, like my dark rides. That kind of mixes it all together. And uh, yeah, we've done a few of those and, and the coaster itself there, I'd say that was the best coaster uh, out of the three of those that we've done. Uh, but onwards and upwards, we've done three coaster rides, two different credits. Let's carry on getting them all here at the park. Right then, next up it's time to ride Anaconda. 1991 aerodynamics looping coaster. Four inversions, then we've got to look forward to on this one. Quite a nice queue line down here, how it runs next to the water. With all the coasters on top of it there. Oh, and some great views, there's Intimidator in the background. Honestly, I'm so disappointed. I mean, I had friends who came out and for opening day to go on that thing. And that was nine years ago, and they said, oh, it was, it was brilliant. I've had nine years of waiting to get on it. And yeah, that's why I'm just a bit like, oh, a bit deflated from it. But uh, there we go, we've got to keep moving forward. We've done some great rides this trip. We've also done some disappointing rides this trip. Uh, but like I say, when it comes to the hype, uh, you know, like Shambhala, like, I absolutely love that coaster personally, uh, Port Aventura, and I gave that a lot of hype. But don't sort of get too excited until you've been on it yourself and you can make your own opinions on it, definitely. We've learned that a lot this trip with what we've seen. This looks really, really pretty. Love at the bottom of the first drop there, how it sort of dips into the water uh, before going into them inversions. Looks very, very nice. Let's go and have a ride. Best arrow looper I've ever been on there. It was uh, some of the profile on there was a little bit interesting, and uh, yeah, the layout was really weird, especially the section behind me here. These weird corners. Um, yeah, not one of my favourites, but I'm glad we went on it. You know me, love my arrow coasters. Uh, but yeah, in terms of my favourite part of that, it was that first drop, to be honest, into the tunnel uh, under the water. I thought that was really quite nice. Uh, anyway, up next, we've got another coaster, fourth coaster of the day. It's a battle of stunt coaster, another Premier Rides. We did one of these at Kings Island. Used to be all themed to the Italian job. Uh, and then, of course, when the park changed ownership, all that branding went away. Uh, but yeah, let's go for a ride on here. I think this opened here in 2006. If you're really good fan, the coasters they are, the Batlot Stunt Coaster. Unfortunately, no audio, no effects, uh, like there's supposed to be fire and stuff. Nothing, Brett. Like, what's going on? Coaster itself, though, they're good, aren't they, then? Yeah, but we're struggling. Ooh, yeah, 40 miles an hour, though, on those. Yeah. Uh, and going into that helix, exact same coaster layout. As, uh, as the one at Kings Island. I found that actually to ride a lot better in terms of the spin. Ooh, fire's on on the top spin. Sorry, guy, there we are. Yeah, that's why I found that to ride a lot better than the one at Kings Island. It was a lot smoother, it wasn't, there wasn't a rattle, but unfortunately there's just no effect working at all. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? Because they are built around effects, those rides, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. Got, you know, a couple mid courses to really show off the ride and. I don't, I don't think the theming was as good around that one either in yeah, some areas. Yeah, barren spots, didn't yeah, 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 but a barren 1898. But we've got a sad bit now, talking to Baron, when we planned this road trip last year, there was a ride, a massive bucket list ride to get on here, other than Intimidator, and that was, of course, Volcano of the Blast. And this was the space for it. Look at this. This coast, I think, what, it opened in 1998, didn't it? Yeah. It ran for 20 years. It was not, it was 
Obviously they have the intimate impulses like at Cedar Point, but there was not actually any of the coasters that were the intimate impulse with the rest of the layout. A full layout. A full layout, so it's just, it's gone, it's just sad. The reason it's gone, it had a lot of technical issues. They announced uh, that this year it was gonna be closed and it was all done very, very light, uh, very on the quiet really. There wasn't really time to do last rides or anything. It just sort of happened. And there we go, this is a teaser for the new ride coming in 2021, Expeditions on the Horizon, which is interesting. That doesn't really hint towards a coaster, really, more another type of ride. But I don't know, unless we're going to see some sort of like the African safari themed coaster. I don't know, but that was all the queue and station area around there. And in terms of the demolition work, hey, Brett's having a little look there. And in terms of the demolition work, we can hear it at the moment. There's all diggers over there and uh, removing it all. And yeah, the ride doesn't really, it's gone. I mean, if you're gonna, what they've done to this, they've obviously got something big planned because you wouldn't take a fan favorite out like this if you didn't have anything replacing it. So we're hoping that they're gonna put something in big and it's gonna be a good replacement because if they put something in poor, it's not gonna go down well. It's not, like, it's a shame. Taylor was saying how that was such a, a big ride for this park in terms of the queue line. It always had a wait. What I've seen from videos online, it looks like it always had the longest wait in the park, so. Yeah. Shame, but you never know. Some new style of ride might come in there and it might blow people away. So. I'm just good because when we planned the trip, it was a, a big reason for us coming to this park was to ride that. And of course, Intimidator 305, but. Anyway, it's gone. I'm never going to get to ride it. Never going to get the credit, uh, which is a shame. However, um, at least people have got out there. There was 20 years to ride it. Unfortunately, just not my luck with that one. Anyway, up next, we've got a nice Mac Rise bobsleigh. Opened in 1988, this one. So let's go and have a ride. Love a good Mac Ride. Love a good bobsleigh. So let's see how this one rides. Oh, footage there of the Mac Rides bobsleigh that we went on uh, not the best one of those I've done but certainly not the worst either in terms of the look of it on there it kind of looks like it needs a bit of work just a bit of upkeep to be honest it wasn't riding that good either a little bit of vibration on it I know it's an older ride from the 80s but uh, I've been on ones that are older than that that certainly ride a bit better in terms of how they uh, feel uh, but yeah quite enjoyed getting on it another Mac ride and we've got another one in the park I had to get on later on as well, another Matt coaster. And the last clip you saw there as well, another bit of footage of where Volcano the Blast coaster was. And there's a little cheeky look over the fence there. I had to see that site ready for 2021 and a replacement ride going in. Uh, but anyway, we're going to make our way down to the RMC now. Let's give this a go. Twisted Timbers, uh, opening 2018. Um, so yeah, not all that at all. Looking forward to giving this a go. What's fascinating about this is we did Hurler, the wooden roller coaster, when we was at Carowinds. Uh, that is what this used to be. It used to be called Hurler. Exact same ride. However, they've turned it into an RMC. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this rides and how it feels, because uh, Hurler was terrible. One of the worst wooden roller coasters I've ever been on, if not the worst, uh, as we said back in the vlog. Um, so yeah, you've got to remember, that's what this uh, used to be. And then now they've turned it into this RMC. So have a look at this. Very, very interesting. I mean, look at that there. You've got the inversion on the first drop. Tell you what, Brett, looks a bit better than Hurler, doesn't it? Yeah, a slight upgrade. A slight upgrade, yeah, just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh, there we go, there's the other Mac coaster. Um, bum, ba, Love it, let's head down here and have a look. So we just got to the entrance of Twisted Timbers and unfortunately, it has just gone down. However, there's still some people in the queue line. They've not fully evacuated the station yet, so Fingers crossed, it's gonna be back open soon. I mean, it was down this morning when we got here. It's owned up for a little bit, it's gone down again. So hopefully we're gonna get on it shortly. We're gonna hang about in the area, have a little ride on this 2002 
Mac Rides coaster. Look at this, nice colour scheme on here. Apparently it's been repainted. I think Taylor said it was yellow and blue before. There you go, quite like these. In terms of looking at the layout here, it does look very familiar. In fact, yes, I think it is. So this is actually the same layout as Matterhorn Blitz at Europa Park. However, it has not got uh, the vertical lift hill. Yeah, so normally here, obviously you see the brake run. That'll be the station. You go up into the vertical lift hill, round the top there, down the drop. And yeah, it is. Yeah, looking at all these sections over here. It's got quite an interesting name, this one. This is the entrance just over here. There you go, it's Apple Zapple. But yeah, this opened here in 2002. So I'll show you a little bit of off-ride footage and hopefully afterwards, we'll be able to get on Twisted Timbers just next door. Fingers crossed. We're not having much luck with RMCs this trip, are we? enjoyed the Mac there, I think they're very good family coasters. Would have been nice with a bit of theming around it. Uh, we had that layout definitely the same, other than the fact of that first corner and the fact it didn't have a vertical lift hill. Um, yeah, it was the same as Matterhorn Blitz at Europa Park. Anyway, we're coming around to ride Grizzly, a huge wooden coaster, and Taylor was like, right, where's the entrance? So I said to him, and I'm like, so guys, where's the entrance? And he's like, well, probably down here by the go-karts. I'm like, okay, let's walk down there. And so we start walking. And he's, they're like, where is it? And, so and the entrance Brett, is through Brett the is gift smart. shop. He's like, wait, is it through the gift shop? And I'm like, ah, Brett's smart. He gets it. Yeah, you, you, like, you have to walk through the gift I shop. I don't think I've ever been on a roller coaster where I have to walk through a gift shop yeah, first to, gift to shop. go on. Like, that yeah, is very yeah. different. It but. is very different. Hey. Oh, oh, oh. You I mean. like your pirate. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, no, here we go. Let's give it a ride. This opened in, what, 1982, I think, this one? I Pretty sure it was 82. So uh, yeah, we're going to have a ride. Oh, look at these. I tell you what, this is a nice section of the park around here. It's a really nice gift shop. Like, yeah. I recently redid it and it looks pretty good. I don't mind walking through it because it looks nice. So. Bad oh my god. How cool are they? Oh, I love it. What a great way to start a ride. I mean, it's different, isn't it? Like, yeah, I've never different. walked through a gift shop, I don't Isley think. Wood. Isley Wood. This is where I'm missing something really obvious now. Isley Wood, in, after a session in the gym. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, this is nice. Like, I like. like Can you imagine having that at the end of your bed, like, at night, just standing at the bottom? I mean, no one had ever tried I'd, I'd love to, like, wheel it in when Charlotte was asleep and just wheel it in at the bottom of the bed. I think you should like get out of your bed, put that in, and when she wakes up in the morning, lay next to that thing. Can you, <laughs> or can you imagine at the bottom of like a big bed and then just waking up like, oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Grizzly, right. 1982 wooden coaster built by Philadelphia. So let's go and have a little uh, little ride on this one. Enjoy your ride, sure. I don't think we're going to get many off-ride shots of this because I think it's all in the trees over here. But apparently this is a brilliant night ride. So uh, if we're still about later on, we'll definitely do it tonight. Right, well that was a very pleasant surprise, wasn't it? I enjoyed that. I mean, Taylor said, sit at the back, but yeah. on the second row in the back, didn't you, with that yeah, one? Yeah, second to back is your best seat on Grizzly. And that was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I, I love that. 
Twisted Timbers has the most airtime in the park, and it's really good. It's proper RMC airtime. But Grizzly has the best single airtime moment in the park. I mean, it was amazing. It's in, in the tunnel as well. Like, Absolutely. Uh, fantastic. It, really enjoyed really impressive. it. And, and wait till we, we do it at night. It's. I think it's a better night ride than the Beast. I mean, I wouldn't know because unfortunately we didn't get <laughs> yeah. the Beast in the dark, this which was sad. But hey, hopefully, so. Night. If you haven't done Grizzly Night, do it. It's awesome. Yeah, it's I mean, so I just really enjoyed it. Like, it's not the longest of coasters. It's certainly not the smoothest of wooden coasters, but it doesn't need to be. It's a nice classic Absolutely. ride yeah. in all the uh, surroundings as well, and which you really makes so far it. It's your favorite ride you've done. Yeah, today. I mean, that might be a bit controversial, but for me, that I, I would say I got more enjoyment out of that. That Intimidator yeah. 305. I will say, I've talked to a lot of people who come here. You're not the only one with that opinion. There's several people. That's it's interesting. It's their favorite coaster. Yeah, I just, I know, I didn't really hear much about it. Absolutely. Saw That's it on like RCDB. It. No one talks about it. Had a little look at it and thought, right, yeah, well, of course, we'll give it a ride. But I didn't yeah. know exactly what to expect. But, and um, yeah, a couple of nice drops on there and some bits of air time. And them two big, big moments were incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, really enjoyed it. But here we go, Race of 75 next. Rebel Yell. Or, Rebel yeah, it used to be known as <laughs> Rebel Yell. Built in 1975, of course, with the name. Um, so yeah, I look forward to giving this a ride. It's two credits, this, isn't it, really? Yep, two different two, tracks yep. to get. Um, so yeah, we'll give both of these a go and see what it's like. Did, did you say that it got retracked a few years so ago? So they retracked the drop and they never repainted it. So it's right. a white structure except for the drop that's, that's brown. And when they retract it, it kind of took out all the airtime. So there's only like <laughs> one airtime going on now. It's kind of sad. We'll see what very happens. Smooth, very smooth. They, they succeeded in making it smooth. That's good. So we'll go on there, give it a ride, and I'll put in some off-ride shots. <laughs> Some fantastic views there of Razor 75 that we've just come off. Nice out and back layout, very, very smooth. Hardly any airtime though, unfortunately. But I did like it because you got some fantastic views of Intimidator over there. Look at that. Probably my favorite view in the park, actually, of that coaster on the turnaround section. Oh, what a place to stop. You're right there, Brett. You're looking a bit on edge then. Didn't know what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> what a place to stop. Of course, we're going to have to go up the Eiffel Tower later, but we can also film up there. Get some great views across the park and the surrounding area. But yeah, it was okay, Razor 75, nothing spectacular. Uh, but it's a nice classic coaster, isn't it? Uh, I do like a good racing coaster. And you can see all the retrack work that they've done on there, actually. I'll zoom in a bit for you. All that retracking down there. Like quite a few of the parks that we've done on this trip. There's also a water park here as well. See some of the slides down there. It looks rather quiet down there. I mean, we've only done one water park this trip, and that was when we was at Holiday World. We went into that one and, and did some of the slides there. Still nothing over at Twisted Timbers. We see any action over there, Taylor? Anything uh, happening? No one on the break room. The train is sitting there empty on the uh, block before the station. There's another train in the station. Good news is. We have what looks to be one of the best gyro drop towers. Yes, I mean, look at this. The braking on this looks ridiculous. Um, I'm looking forward to giving this a go. I think we're going to do it next, probably, are we, whilst yeah. it's round here? It looks like it's got some great braking. I mean, I love a good drop tower, and yesterday I was severely disappointed uh, with the Mach Tower that we did over at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. It was terrible. It was probably the, well, it was the worst one I've been on. So controlled. But yeah, wait till you see this braking just here. Get ready. Whoa. Brakes really, really low down. Intermin, in my opinion, are the king of drop towers. So I look forward to giving that a ride. Some wonderful views there on the Ferris wheel, and we've come to give it a go. We're going on the drop tower that's got a fantastic name. I've been looking forward to saying this one all day. It's called Drop Tower. Yeah, we've done a few just drop towers with the name this trip. Uh, but here we go. At the end of the day, it's not about the name, it's about how it rides. So uh, let's go on and we'll let you know our thoughts when we come up. Right then, so we did the drop tower. Fantastic. Good eight out of 10 from me. I'm a bit picky when it comes to my drop towers. 
Um, that, was that was brilliant, much better than the Mach Tower that we did yesterday and that I really didn't enjoy. But yeah, we did that, fantastic views and the braking on that really low as expected. You feel the speed really just coming into the station, it's like the trees oh. around it get the wind everywhere. It's brilliant, intense. yeah, standing in the queue line waiting to go on, you get that breeze coming against you. Yeah. Uh, and then we just made our way over to the Great Pumpkin Coaster, uh, a junior coaster credit that you do need a child for. However, we used our British charm and we actually managed to get, get, the get the junior coaster credit, which is great because that's the only like kiddie coaster to get on here uh, that we needed a kid for, and we got on it. And we would have been struggling because there's not many kids around. We no, like, like that was our one chance. So we and, we, and we got it. We walked up there with confidence. We got on it. So happy days. So the only coaster we might miss here today potentially is the RMC. That would be good. But right. hopefully yeah. it's going to open. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do Woodstock Express now. Anyway, whilst we're here, another coaster. Then we've got the BNM Flawless over at the side here to try out as well. So we got on there. You have to check out Taylor's video to see the on ride footage of us on there. You got some uh, good footage of us there, didn't I you? Hope you guys are proud of yourself. Yeah. You look like you're having way too much fun. Honestly, you just got to walk up there with confidence and go for it. I noticed you had hands up. Yeah, hands yeah. in the air. Like, uh, you know, not a bad little ride. And here she is. There you go, the great pumpkin coaster. But anyway, yes, it's gonna have a ride on Woodstock Express. Done a couple of these on the trip. Nice family wooden coaster. A lot more snappy than they actually look. Uh, you might be wondering where's Alex gone? He's gone for a bit of a chill out. Again, he's feeling a little bit tired. I think the heat's getting to him a little bit, uh, which is fair enough. We've got Kenny Wood tomorrow. Uh, some nice classics to get on there. Uh, Phantom's Revenge I'm really excited for. Um, so yeah, he's gone to have a bit of a rest. Uh, and then he's going to come and join us again later on. But here we go, let's go on Woodstock. Don't need a kid for this one. Uh, nice little junior coaster. These are really, really good actually. I enjoy these a lot. They're certainly a lot more intense than they look. I'll tell you what though, the B&M looks beautiful there. Can't wait to have a ride on that. It was relocated uh, to this park, relocated B&M. Here we go, let's go on Woodstock. Stock Express there, brilliant family coasters they are. Really nice step up ride from something like the Junior Coaster that we did before, before you get on something a little bit bigger. And uh, yeah, really nice rides, we've done a few of those. That was probably the best one of the three I'd imagine. Uh, I do like how you can get around the back of it here and get some really nice shots of it as well. Uh, the other seems to be quite covered up in the trees where as that is quite nice to be able to actually see it from here. Uh, we was just about to do the B&M, however, it's gone down. All we've got left to do is the B&M and the RMC. Uh, but yeah, hopefully it's a B&M, isn't it? B&Ms are reliable coasters i'm sure it'll be back up at some point soon as uh, so whilst we're waiting for that we're gonna head down here and do another dark ride we're gonna do boo blasters we've already seen two of these we've only been on one of them uh we didn't do the one i think it was at carowinds uh because it had a big queue and we just didn't have time at that park like uh, we had so much to fit in and we managed to get all the coasters and re-rides uh, but we thought we're not going to waste our time with Boo Blasters because uh, we did one before. Um, so yeah, we're going to head down there, have a go on this one. Apparently this is the best one uh, in the chain so I look forward to having a ride on it and let's see how it compares. Yeah, it's fit, I'll be there, so, yeah. so you get gas. So here we are then at Boo Blasters already. It's better than the other ones we've seen. It's got a nice queue line. And we've got some funny... Uh, Puns over here, I'll be on some of these gravestones. Huh, what H we got? H. Dumpty, I was pushed. All right, okay, <laughs> that's quite cool. Here lies Ron DeVoos, he met with death. I must say it's got a better exterior than the others already and the queue line all throughout the trees here. It's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. All right, let's go do another good dark so ride. Secluded. No one knows the here, so it's always a walk on. Yeah, it's... Uh... Welcome to the Haunted Mansion. Thank you oh, very much. So that, wrong, wrong ride there, Brad. I, sorry about that, viewers. Sorry about that. Oh, I do like the skull lights up there. Look at the nice little details on those. I think that should be... Oh, yeah, it's flickering a little bit up at the top. I have missed dark rides on this trip. We've done a few, but nowhere near enough. That's something what the Europe parks do very, very well. And, of course, if you go to Disney and Universal. But here we go. It's gone Boo Blasters. It's quite a nice station. 
He's going to have a ride, interactive dart ride. Here we go. At least we got guns that are actually working on this one. system on this one as well which is interesting not an omni mover style system Oh, no trespassing down this way. It's spooky down here. Bit of on ride footage there from Boo Blasters. Certainly better than the one we did the other day, uh, but still not one of my favourite dart rides. I think America, outside of Universal and Disney, have got a long way to go when it comes to dart rides. And I'd like to see more, especially some of these Cedar Fair parks. We'll see them do something a bit like Symbolic or a big high capacity trackless dart ride. Uh, anyway, another coaster, the BM's now open. It's Dominator, relocated to here in 2008. Five inversions, being on Flawless Coaster. And I must say the layout on this looks a bit different. Going into the large loop, and then there's a bit of an overbank instead of going into the Cobra Roll straight away. So I quite like the look of this. So let's go and have a ride. And I'll put in a bit of off-ride footage for you. Let's go on Dominator. So we just had a ride on Dominator, the BNM Flawless, and I enjoyed that good solid coaster. Again, not a massive standout ride, but a good coaster that I enjoyed. Nice that it's got a bit of a different layout. It was on the back row, quite snappy actually going down into that first drop. Huge loop at the start of that ride. Uh, and then instead of going straight into the Cobra Roll, you do that bit of an overbank, turn around, and then down into the Cobra Roll. But wasn't that intense really for a Cobra. Um, but you know, it was still good fun. In terms of the other parts of the layout, after the mid-course break run, quite a nice popper there, time going into that drop. 
and I do really, really like finding it very satisfying when you've got interlocking corkscrews uh, just like on there as well. So it was a good ride. Enjoyed it. You like that, Brett? Being yeah, it was a good, uh, good coaster. I mean, strange layout. I mean, it's probably mm. the only one of that type of layout. Weird how it had a couple of different color schemes on it. I thought it rode really smooth because it's been relocated. Most relocated yeah. rides are a little bit jolty because the supports obviously have been rebuilt and stuff. But I mean, it was a good coaster. I wouldn't rank it one of the best horses, but it wasn't a weak one. So it's good fit for the park. Nothing it's amazing. Solid. That's the word we like. Don't solid. solid ride. Yeah. And it's, it's nice to have one of those because we really haven't had that many solid rides mm. today. Yeah, it's either been really bad or, good. or really yeah, good. So, uh, But yeah, in terms of one more credit left, We've just looked on the app, we've heard it's open, so we're gonna head down there now to the RMC. Fingers crossed we're gonna get it, don't wanna miss a third RMC this trip. Um, so yeah, let's make our way down there and uh, do Twisted Timbers. Yeah, that's what we like to see. Back in action, it's been, had a lot of downtime today. We're about to ride iBox Track, three inversions, Twisted Timbers, and like I said earlier on, it used to be known as Hurler, and then RMC did the conversion. Here we go, looking forward to riding this. Looks great, the layout actually, from what we saw earlier on around the back. Uh, when we was on Grizzly, you get a bit of a preview uh, of some of the layout around the back, and it looks great. So here we go. Gotta put the uh, camera and everything in the locker over here. Then we'll join the line for Twisted Timbers. So we've just had two rides on Twisted Timbers here at Kings Dominion and that ride is absolutely incredible. For a coaster that's what, 111 feet tall? That is absolutely fantastic. Three inversions packed in there, the first one being on the drop itself uh, that you go straight into. I wasn't sure on exactly how that was gonna feel to be honest, uh, being used to going down a, a big drop at the start. However, I actually quite liked it. And I think the fact that, you know, they didn't have lots of height to play with here. Going into a normal drop might have been quite underwhelming, whereas going into that uh, was fantastic into that barrel roll. Uh, this ride keeps the speed really, really well. You then go round, do the big overbank at the back there, before coming round into three huge airtime hills uh, that are absolutely phenomenal. We was on the back row both times and we were whipped out of our seats. Following on from crazy. that, uh, oh, absolutely right. crazy. What a ride, what a ride. Uh, you're making your way around uh, to various other elements. Like I say, you've got two more inversions, some more brilliant pops of airtime, an amazing head chopper uh, that's actually in the structure just over here, where you have a moment of airtime, go again, and there's all the wooden structure there, and it really feels like you're just gonna hit your, ha hit your arms on it. Uh, it's incredible. My favorite element of the ride itself uh, has gotta be that, that first drop, to be honest. Like, I really, really enjoyed that. I wasn't expecting that. I thought that might be one of the more weaker parts of it. But it was just a bit different. Going round off the lift hill, straight into that inversion. I wouldn't, I don't know if I prefer it over the drop or not. However, it was just a little bit different. So I think that's what made it a standout ride for me. In terms of the experience, the package, it's got a bit of theming around. I don't think it's got the nicest of stations, but the train design is really nice. And it's good to see RMC uh, have started to put some more backs on the trains themselves. Because normally you've got a lot of wires and stuff exposed, uh, so that was quite cool. 
But yeah, overall, I thought it was a brilliant RMC. Uh, a lot better uh, than some of the others that I've done out there. I would take it over Lightning Rod personally. Uh, I thought it was just, uh, I, I like inversions. What makes RMC for me is inversions. And the fact it's got them uh, was fantastic. But here she comes again. Uh, everybody arms in the air, enjoying the ride. This thing carries the speed so well. Absolutely loved it. I'd probably say my fourth favorite RMC uh, right in there. What do you think then, Brett? That was absolutely exceptional. <laughs> I mean, we weren't really expecting too much walking through the queue line because, like you said, it's really not that impressive off the ride. But wow, for 110 feet. Oh! For 110 feet, it is amazing what they've packed in. I mean, the fact that we rode, was it yesterday or the day before we rode the clone of the old wooden coaster? Yeah. The Perla, which was appalling. And Terrible. It, and it turned it into this. Truly is a group amazing. I mean, what RMC do is, I don't think many manufacturers can do what they do. It's awesome. I mean, the trains are a lot better than the older ones. It's just a really full package good ride. I mean, it's obviously it's not tall. It's a little slower than you would like, but the airtime is crazy. A lot of airtime. Like we're talking like near steel vengeance level when it comes yeah. to the airtime. Like I think it lacks maybe another inversion, like we said, mm. too many airtime hills. But if you're looking for air, I mean, I'm not complaining about that. I love the airtime hills, but I mean, this part for me is my favorite part. You go through the head chopper right here, and then you're going through a turn. You think it's just a normal turn, and it slams you into an airtime moment. It's quite intense in some Very areas. Intense. I mean, well done to see the first putting this in here because it's not easy to do from such a, a cruddy old ride really so much better than twisted cyclone and that's the one over georgia yeah did, six flags very similar in height that one's 100 feet this is 110 so 111 maybe so i mean they've really just really learned from that one i think they're the same year actually honestly but i do prefer the bow row drop to that little dinkle yeah one. yeah i think that was really good like i enjoyed that and the uh, these three massive airtime hills at the back were incredible definitely got to get alex on this yeah like hopefully he's going to come and ride it i really hope so uh but there you go a little look at it they've actually let us bring our camera down into the queue line normally you're not allowed to but the guy on the entrance we just explained that we just wanted to get a few shots but uh there you go that is our thoughts on that absolutely loved it brilliant rmc and for the height they've done a cracking job it just makes me really excited to get on untamed at wallaby holland because that's a little bit taller than this uh, i think it's going to ride beautifully really really impressed Bonjour and welcome to Paris. It's time to go up the Eiffel Tower. We didn't get to go all the one at Kings Island because it was closed. So I'm looking forward to this, it's open. And here we go, we're going up in the elevator. Taking us all the way up to the top. Like I mentioned before, it's a one third replica of the actual Eiffel Tower. So I'm looking forward to it. We've got a bit of entertainment going on around here for the Grand Carnival. And coming up at eight o'clock tonight, so in a couple of hours, We've got the main event, so to speak, which is the parade. Uh, but already you've got a bit of entertainment going on all around the side. Loads of food stands. Very, very nice. <laughs> Welcome to France, everybody. Oh, oh. Hey, how you doing? Very good, thank you. Very, very good. Here we are then, climbing the Eiffel Tower. Shame we can't walk up the steps though, we would have quite liked that. Obviously on the actual Eiffel Tower, you can climb up. You need some long legs to walk up all these stairs, I'll tell you that for sure. Oh, there you go. You can climb up the real Eiffel Tower. Oh, great views. Oh, this is like the second time in my life I've been a British. Who was the first time? A McDonald's. A McDonald's. McDonald's. Oh, I'm glad that could be a second. McDonald's. Yeah. McDonald's, yeah. McDonald's. McDonald's. Yeah. McDonald's. Yeah. McDonald's. Yeah. 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 Don't have that McDonald's. Oh, I haven't been up at all this year, do they? I was today. Oh, yeah. Come yeah. on, yeah. it is a whole lot. No, I need to have this. I'm going home oh, and be like, this is amazing. amazing. And here we are. There's the top of the Eiffel Tower. There's only three of us here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
a look at the uh, area of de development over there for 2021. All that area where Volcano, the blast, used to be. And there's some of the track, actually. I can zoom right in on that. Fantastic. Meow. Good zoom on this camera all the way back out. Meow. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. What a great view. And obviously, you've got all these LED lights on here as well. So it'll all be lit up nicely this evening. Really not much else around this park. It's very much in the middle of nowhere. Has a look down at your entrance area. All the trees around there, beautiful with all the fountains. Absolutely wonderful. Would love to have done the one at Kings Island. There's the log flume down there. Nobody on it. We've got to go on there and have a ride. All in the trees. There's a rapids, I think, somewhere around here as well. They're, the hurler trains are still here. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, you see them? You look right down there by those docking bays. You can ah, see yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me zoom in on those for you. They've been here for about two years. There you go, the old hurler trains down there. Wow, thanks for that. Really interesting. Oh, absolutely wonderful. Grizzly over there. And Twisted Timbers. And we always have a zoom in. She's just going around, just leaving the left hill. Wow. Really do like observation points in parks. Absolutely wonderful. I'll share some more footage from up here and zoom in on a few of the uh, standout rides. Some absolutely wonderful views there from the top of the Eiffel Tower here at King's Dominion. Spectacular views, and I like how it's included in the admission. Some parks would have that as an upcharge, and uh, no, I thought that was absolutely wonderful. I think it'd benefit from a few like benches up there, maybe like even a bar area or something, or maybe do an hour in the evening where it turns into like an adult bar or something. That'd be quite nice. Uh, but nonetheless, spectacular views, and it was great as, as well for me filming this vlog to get some nice zoomed in shots of some of the other rides here at the park, especially because down on ground level, you don't get that good of views really of some of the rides, um, so it was good to go up there and, and get some zoomed in shots so you can see them. Anyway, look at this beauty behind me. I love a good flat ride. Not done that many this trip really, and I've definitely not done a hus top. Oh, and there we go, all clear. Looking forward to uh, giving this a ride because it's got some special effects. It looks like a bit of a yeah, baby Talican at Fantasia Land. Here we go, because it's got water effects and it's also got fire effects. So we're going to go on here and I'll put in some off ride footage. Uh, but yeah, obviously, Talican's got more at the sides in terms of the theming, but it's the exact same ride. It's got uh, a front row here, another row on the other side facing that way. Uh, these are much better on the front though. 
with the views. And it's got a soundtrack as well, all well themed. Here's some footage of it in action. It's Crypt. Crypt is a really good Hus top spin. We've got a nice five flip action there as well. All the special effects on there. It was really good fun, I enjoyed it. And then we made our way over back to I-305 where we just had another go. And I'll tell you what, that has warmed up a lot since this morning. Really much, much better uh, than when we went on it earlier on today. I enjoyed it a lot more. Still not quite lived up to the hype. However, I'm not quite as disappointed as I was earlier on. Uh, I thought it was running a lot better, much faster, and then transitions. Um, probably my favourite part of the ride uh, is that transition from the left to the right, and it whips you round to the side. Uh, but yeah, it's not quite as disappointing now as when I went on it earlier on. I think I was just so hyped, I could hardly sleep last night, so I was so excited to get on it. Uh, it's great to actually come back down here, do another ride. These coasters do take time to warm up, um, but yeah, like it's a lot better now than earlier on today. Still nowhere near a top coaster for me, uh, but I do very much enjoy it. I'd say I'd take it over Millennium Force now uh, after doing it again, uh, which is good. Still prefer uh, Fury 325. I think Fury 325 offers more that I enjoy on there. Uh, however, for the speed and intensity, certainly living more up to the hype now after doing some more rides. And of course, we're going to do it at night as well later on. So yeah, we'll be back down here later. And I think it's going to be a brilliant night ride. So we made our way down to Candy Apple Grove to come and watch the Grand Carnival. Very much looking forward to this. When was it Kings Island last week? It was supposed to be on, however, it was cancelled due to the weather. Uh, so I was hoping and praying that we were going to get to see it here. You know me, I like my street theatre and entertainment. It's just started, I can see it coming round. So here's some highlights from this special event. It only runs a few weeks every year. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing this, all the costumes. Uh, and yeah, the music's really catchy as well. So here we go. Here's a little look at some highlights from the Grand Carnival. Awesome, I love it. Come on, Alex, give me a party.
Grand Carnival! Woo! Guys, streamers, absolutely love this. The quality, the production value is very, very good. Because we've had that show stop, everybody back to the floats, and we'll carry on moving past. Oh yeah, look at this. <laughs> Grand Carnival! Absolutely incredible, the Grand Carnival, and yeah, it only runs here for a few weeks, and it's also running at the moment at Kings Island. Then they're going to move them between the other Cedar Fair parks. The production quality of that was absolutely awesome. Seeing a lot of different shows and parades at theme parks, and that was right up there for me as one of the best. Really, really enjoyed that. The soundtrack, the amount of performers in that show was incredible, and the overall cost to put that together, the quality of the floats, everything was amazing there. A show stop, I loved it. What do you think? <laughs> it was great! Fiesta! Yeah. We love that, don't we? Great. I've missed seeing more stuff like that on this trip, really. But that was amazing. Entertainment is so important. Whether you like coasters or not, show, parades, fireworks. Oh, the fact like that's like my favourite thing I've seen here today. Like, I, I love agree. that. I agree. Uh, but we are theme bargain enthusiasts, aren't we? We love that sort we of like stuff. The package deal, so. Uh, yeah, I thought that was amazing. Did you like the quality of that? Oh, we got brilliant. Free beans. Look, at this. Look at that. Straight to eBay. Straight to eBay. But, uh, that was absolutely brilliant. I love that. Uh, yeah, what an amazing package here at this park. Does it work in this park? I don't really know because I feel like something like that would work better in a full on theme park, not an amusement park. However, I'm not complaining. That was brilliant. The fact that Cedar Fair have put that together. And I'll tell you what, it makes me think that next year for the 150th anniversary of Cedar Point, we're going to see a big Cedar Point celebration parade. That's what I think personally, anyway, uh, that we're going to see something like that. Who knows? That was Grand Carnival. We've got a few more rides we're going to get in. Uh, well, firstly, we need to get Alex on this wonderful RMC. RMC! Yeah! Twisted Timbers. Let's yeah, go. Let's go. Look at the size of that big bell. Look at that, absolutely wonderful. Just been on the nice wind seeker. So you have some great views over the park in the sunset. Absolutely gorgeous. Would have made some great GoPro footage that. Not permitted though, unfortunately. The sun's going down and we're going on the log flume. Look at this, how do we even pronounce that? Oh my God, here we are. Taylor, how do we, how do we say this log flume? I can't pronounce that. Lumber Company. Okay, Brill, thank you. We're going on that. Let's get on a ride. We're all going on? Come on. Oh, oh. come on, come on, your log flume. Oh, man, he's not been on much the past couple of days. Oh, let's see what this is like. There's also a rapids here. I don't think we're going to go on it, though, just in case it's a bit too much of a soaker tonight before we get in the car and drive back. Plus, we're running out of time. We need to get a couple of night rides in Grizzly tonight and also uh, Intimidator 305, of course. There we go, it's got on the log flume. We'll see you when we come off. Oh. 
<laughs> What's going on there, Taylor? You look a bit wet there. Do you see this? Yes. This is so. Do, do, do you see this? Look, one, oh, one little blodge right there. One little right blodge. I tell you what, that's I'll a good blog Taking a hit for the team. Yeah. I come here all the time. You know, it's fine. I'll just walk like this. Yeah. <laughs> look at you back here. There, you soaked. So as he soaked. Well, that's a good log flume, that. As we're going up the second lift hill, the wave of water from the first lift hill, because we're on a slant, just slides down my butt. Yeah, like, that's oh, the thing, the worst on. thing was, it was on the small drop. I like, know, the small yeah. drop had a bigger wave than the first one. It was like, we go down, and then it was like, we front loaded it, so the water just goes, it was a bit of a soaker. Brett is fine. He's dry. Brett was in the back, living Brett the dream. Just had the lovely back seat, no, no water at all. It was a good flume though, that wasn't it? Amazing. I like that. But yeah, look at this. Absolutely soaked, dripping wet through here for the rest of the night. Look at that. Wow, look at the atmosphere around here. Absolutely incredible. All the lighting. Wow. Die hard, you are the reason that I drink. Die hard, you are the reason that I still hope. King's Dominion. I know you all love me on a bit of drumming, so let's go. Here we go. Okay, this lady really wants to be on YouTube. Come on, show me your best stuff. Come on, show me what you can do. Yeah, oh my gosh, you're doing the floss. Oh, yeah. The boys are loving it. They are loving it. Oh my God, we'll see you later. Have a good evening. Bye bye. See you later. Oh my God, we have just done a five ride marathon there on the same train we just kept re-riding on Intimidator 305 and I must say that is an absolutely world-class night ride this morning I was disappointed and you'll see that in the vlog nine years I've been wanting to ride this thing ever since it opened I wanted to come out here to this park and give that thing a try and this morning you saw my reaction from a daytime ride I was disappointed I had friends that were here on the opening day and they told me how awesome that ride was and I just did it this morning and it just didn't do it for me Tonight, doing that marathon on there was absolutely incredible. I've done a lot of night rides. I've been riding coasters for 20 years, and that is one of the best night rides I've ever had right there. Absolutely incredible. Of course, come to this park and try it in the daytime, but for me personally, that is a nighttime ride. And what I'm about to say is really weird, but the grey out, I actually feel it more at night than in the daytime, which is bizarre because it's pitch black out there. There's, hard, there's no lighting at all. You can see nothing that makes it feel much more than 91 miles an hour. And honestly, I am buzzing from that. This is the reaction that I wanted 12 hours ago, uh, but I'm glad that it's delivered at the end of the night. That was amazing. I must say a big shout out to the team on there as well. They just let, let us keep going round. Uh, that was incredible absolutely phenomenal it feels so much faster i must say it's a shame about the trim brake i know it's needed uh because it's just insanely fast uh but yeah like that ride phenomenal at night it's a it's a top 10 night ride right there i absolutely loved it and wow the, that five ride session on there was absolutely incredible and for four of those we weren't even on the back row it was a bit further forward this goes to show that ride is world class it's took me time to get used to it, but it's just kept getting better and better, and what an incredible ride. And you know what we can follow that up with? Grizzly! So let's head over there now for our last ride of the night. So we've just done Grizzly in the dark, and again, that was absolutely incredible, much better than in the daytime. Loved it earlier on. At one point, that was my favorite ride in this park. However, as you'll find out uh, at the end, that may have changed again and then again throughout today. Uh, but there we go, we'll find out at the end of the video. We're literally making our way back up to the entrance because starting literally in a few seconds is the big finale of the day here the grand carnival and the fireworks as well so we can see the eiffel tower in the distance we're getting up here as quick as we can and we're going to see some fireworks to wrap up an awesome evening the day was a bit slow here for me however tonight has been absolutely incredible 
Here's a look at the carnival and some fireworks. We're having such a blast. Speaking of a blast, I thought we could end the night with some fireworks. Absolutely phenomenal. You know me, I love my Feebarg entertainment and I thought that was absolutely fantastic. Uh, all the performers, the fireworks, all the lighting, you've got to think about all that programming that's gone into all these buildings and of course the iconic Eiffel Tower just behind me there. This part when we came in earlier on, it's one of them things that's just sort of, I wasn't a big fan earlier today and then it's my love for the park has just sort of gone like this. And as the day's gone on, it's got better, hello, and better and better. And I must say, I'm leaving this part tonight with fantastic re a fantastic review from it. Uh, I've loved it. These guys are absolutely awesome. The entertainment here for the Grand Carnival has been phenomenal. Of course, other highlights for me. My favorite ride in this park has changed three times today. It was Grizzly, uh, then it was Twisted Timbers, and then I'm leaving tonight with a fantastic roller coaster that I absolutely love this evening, Intimidator 305. It's one of them rides that I didn't fall in love with it earlier. I'm leaving tonight. Uh, we're, I'm more than happy with how that thing was riding tonight. It's been great. The park's just got better throughout the day. Has it got a lot of rides that I found very enjoyable here? Probably not. However, there's a couple of bits here that are really good. The RMC is incredible. Really enjoyed that earlier on. And uh, yeah, three really nice solid coasters. You can't forget the B&M as well. That was really good earlier on. Uh, the Matt Bobsleigh. Honestly, there's some really good stuff here. It's just really took me time today to fully appreciate this park. It's a grower, it really is. And I've loved it. Mr. Alex Crump, everybody. Oh, what do you think? Wow, I don't even feel like the park day has ended. What a day. I feel like 
this parade that's been going on for the last four hours constantly around this Do park has been here for 12 hours. It's been incredible. What an atmosphere. It's been electric. What an end to a park day is all I can say. I think, to be honest, this whole atmosphere that this park has got is sensational. Coming in this morning, eh, not feeling too great. Leaving, feeling blown away. It's a nighttime here. park, this is. Park. Come in the afternoon, get this experience. Come and see this event before it ends. It is sensational. Hopefully, it'll be back on in the future. I hope so. It do does run around the other Cedar Fair Park, Taylor was yeah. saying. So I think the only park that does it like better at night is probably Cedar Point, just because they're. Like, I feel like they're the king of. Maybe I mean I've night. never seen like any yeah. evening stuff like this yeah, there well, before. I mean even it's hard to see the uh, International Street fountains. But yeah. When you're over there, I mean it, it just looks so good. I. I love my home park. It's been it's incredible, great. it really has. And of course, <laughs> yeah. Taylor, it's been really good spending been two awesome. days with you at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. I'm here. The next it's been great, you. but I'm sure we'll be Sometime. back again at a park at some point in the future. Another country, we don't know. Uh, who knows where? Who anything, knows? Anything, anything, Australia, you fancy that? Yeah. That yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's been great to have Taylor with us for two days. Thanks so much for showing us around I'm the two parks. Always happy. You show me around Alt Towers, I'm happy to show you around. We really appreciate it. Brett, what do you think? What a last hour. <laughs> like, wow. Since the parade earlier on, it's just gone vroom. We just had one of the greatest hours of the trip. I mean, those those five rides back to back on Intimidator were just, I mean, we sat next to each other for all five and we just like laughed. You know what I Brian. thought, Brett? We've got to say one thing, haven't we? Gentlemen, and then start your engines! Oh, we loved it. Wow. Them rides tonight, like, it was incredible. Incredible, and then, I mean, that at the end, I mean, for a Cedar Fog, Jesus, Cedar Park to put that on. Yeah. Cedar Fair Park to put that All on. the excitement is just amazing for part to do that. I just, I'm lost for words. I'm even, can't even talk. We've it loved amazing. it. We've also been joined by some fans of the channel today. These guys are pretty incredible. Been amazing. Been amazing. Uh, you've not seen much of them on the video, but the, amazing. Thank you for the support. We really appreciate it. It's been great. And there we go. What a day at Kings Dominion. What was it? Look at these glasses. Oh my God. Oh, it has been incredible with these guys. I mean, it's been some of the best few hours of the trip here tonight. This morning, I didn't think that I was going to be leaving saying all this tonight. It's been incredible, but I tell you what, I am absolutely dripping wet through with sweat. I know it's disgusting, but the humidity has been crazy. It's been nuts. I need a good shower, and then tomorrow, we're off to Kennywood to do some nice classic rides that I cannot wait for. I'm Sean Sandbrook. Thanks for watching Theme Park Worldwide. And now it's time to cue those credits. Bye!